Now what's a watershed? And what's a sink? And then what is noise and what is a digital dam? That all these sorts of questions that we're trying to answer all depend on the scale, depending on whether we're very close to the ground, very local, or whether we're at a county or statewide basis. Now the uh, we need to move a, f a little further while we're trying to understand how to pull all this together and uh, we talk about flow accumulation. We had established flow direction before. We've got the flow moving these directions. We've got a raster that shows which way water is moving cell by cell that if we connect those in a flow accumulation which is an operation in ArcGIS that we could see that this cell is receiving all the water in this this 3 by 3 so that the, this cell has no neighbors spilling into it, this has no neighbors spilling into it, but this one collects it from three, this one collects it from two, and this one collects it from all the other cells in the grid. So if we were to reclassify that flow accumulation grid to take the large values over a certain threshold value that's established based on the landscape, and the threshold varies depending on whether it's fairly flat terrain or whether it's fairly steep terrain. We establish that threshold, reclassify it, and create a new stream network. We can then have a raster version of where water, according to the computer, is flowing on the landscape. We can then make a vector of that and start talking about direction uh, and establish some connections, junctions, and so on. Now there's some problems with this that we, we want to uh, just review for a second is that if we've got uh, our LIDAR derived DEM and we calculate flow direction uh, and flow accumulation on the landscape and we haven't, uh, we could see that there's this pooling of water that doesn't exist in reality and uh, that it has to do with a missing, several missing digital dams and you can see on a, on a very uh, small scale basis you get an idea of where the problems are and there's several different ways to fix this. Uh, the the what, what the logical way w it would be to fill a to create a vector approach where we break the digital dams. Okay, here's a road here that the lidar thought was a digital dam, and that we break that, draw a little section, and use these vectors to connect the net, the flow network so that water can flow on the landscape. And you can see that that the way water is now modeled on this this uh, larger the smaller scale basis that water is flowing correctly because we've broken the digital dam there's not that pooling that we saw earlier so the the pooling has been um, that that didn't exist on the landscape uh, is now correctly handled in our flow network the other way we could talk about we need to talk about problems that could occur is if we chose to fix that digital dam by filling the sink or filling that that area that was pooling the water was collecting the water so so instead of breaking the digital dam with a little vector line we would um, fill the area so that the the water the this area is not low any longer and that as water's moving down this conveyance it would spill correctly over the road now when we do that, you, you get a, an example of it here of, of we created the flow accumulation and you can see that water's pooling behind that digital dam. When we go about filling that, uh, what happens is that the conveyance, the actual water course, is moved. And so that's a problem with the, uh, that you have to be aware of when you're filling sinks is that it actually might displace the water conveyance and you can see where the water conveyance should be and how it was displaced. So now we've corrected that, we've corrected the digital dam and we're now able to have a hydrologically corrected DEM. So we've got the water course in the right place and we've got the digital dam broken so water will now flow on the landscape. Now these correction methods that I've been talking about we need to, to spend a little more time talking about. There's several basic ones. One is a grid break lines where we're, we're working with the vector layer. Another is a grid grieve process and the finally is a new DEM, the topo to raster approach.
the break lines uh, connection method where when we take the vector features we've established the stream network from the flow accumulation reclassification process uh, we then can add those corrections into uh, the, that vector vector system so it would be an arbitrary flow connector system so that after we've created we've taken the DEM we've calculated slope and aspect and flow direction flow accumulation and we're looking at where water's flowing on the landscape by our reclassification of that accumulation we could then go in and put in the appropriate connections so that water moves appropriately on the landscape now the problem with this vector approach is that it's very very time consuming because we're correcting that vector layer and you get an idea of when we're looking at a very small scale here this would be a lot of work for a, a large area now the the thing you want to remember is that we didn't used to do this as much because our DEMs were coarser so we weren't seeing some of these errors we were seeing a lot less detail but with with the detail we we have another set of problems we have these digital dams uh, uh, arising so the lidar data is is a big improvement but it has another set of of, of issues the the final approach uh, or is the second approach is the agree approach where we're we're burning it in where we're taking uh, the the DEM and we're subtracting uh, those areas uh, that are uh, causing water to pool on the landscape inappropriately so we're adjusting the DEM essentially so then we can rerun that process so that it would correctly model water movement on the landscape it would be um, subtracting creating a, a, a special raster with some adjustments within that and then uh, burning that into the raster now the the a new DEM or the topo approach is uh, a little more uh, better suited for hydrological modeling using GIS because it's a blend of the vector and the raster process and it's uh, developed uh, in uh, uh, Australian National University and it's used with the Minnesota D, uh, DNR and you see it in ArcGIS at the topo to raster and here's a, an example of this process here are the catchments and you get an idea of the catchment okay with the stream and the flow uh, uh, conveyance along with direction and through here's an outlet so here's a watershed here's an outlet this is the area contributing to that point and this is uh, looking at it with the DEM with those vector layers um, shaded so they're wetlands these are wetlands or lakes the smooth areas right and the stream data actually is overlaid with the 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 raster data to uh, to breach or enforce the drainage and the streams must have a direction uh, established within them for this process to work okay so now we've got a composite structure where we actually have the streams incorporated into the DEM so it's a hydrologically corrected DEM process and the, the, the tool for that is topo to raster and we'll do this in the lab exercises. Now a couple of things to, to remind you about that the, the corrections we're talking about whether it be with the vector whether it be the grid subtraction uh, the agree process or whether it be a new DEM that these corrections are all resolution dependent and so we have to so scale matters and we've got to think about this process of of uh, the LIDAR DEMs are great but they're bringing in uh, lots of very wonderful detail but there are some problems and it's how you process these at your um, at your landscape level or at your project or scale that makes a difference so you've got to remember that if, if there's junk in there's junk out it's traditional GIS problems is that just feeding data into a simple model doesn't matter doesn't help the problem you really have to carefully think through each step and check your work and make sure that the flow networks and watersheds truly represent 
the hydrology of the landscape. The simple take-home messages are, of course, assess the validity of your uh, assumptions and make sure your environment, uh, environmental variables are established. All right, so you know where your data goes and the sort of basic GIS housekeeping and that you don't interpolate from interpolated data, um, which is uh, often happens inadvertently, and that you don't blindly fill sinks because you can get water to route on the landscape uh, by filling all the sinks, but that that might not be the way it actually is, 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 uh, occurs in reality. Uh, and the other thing is the, uh, the burning in of stream data, is that if you're uh, putting stream data in, it better be correct. You really need to have some, some field level data, some other levels of inf other pieces of information to make sure that you're not introducing less accurate data to the LIDAR data. And this is, goes without saying, uh, check your work and, and understanding your data is the normal caveat. These are some of the resources that are available. And this ends our uh, recap of the hydro hydrological uh, applications lecture.